Hi, so I am Richard and I'm the co-founder of Algovera. And today I'm gonna to talk about our uh, proposal for the Common Stack Prize. So Algovera is a community of independent AI teams. And what we're really passionate about um, is giving uh, ownership uh, back to the creators of different AI apps. Um, so there's three different types of public goods that our community provides. The first is funding. Um, the second is infrastructure, and the third is um, events, all for decentralized AI. And so in terms of funding, um, we just finished our second round of grants, and we funded, I think, 12 different uh, independent AI teams. Um, so you can check out more about like our thoughts behind the grants program in this blog post. Um, projects submit proposals to Discourse. Uh, they're voted on using Snapshot. And then the successful teams, um, we set up a DAO for them, currently using DAO House, but we've also tried Aragon. And this gives them access to a shared treasury um, governance and also hopefully some more features in the future. We have a few different ideas. If you wanna see the full list of the squads in our ecosystem, you can check out this Notion page, which I've linked um, in the proposal. Um, the second one was infrastructure. So we're um, using a number of different technologies uh, with the idea being to make it as easy and quick as possible for individuals to go from idea to a deployed AI application. One of the important components in our stack is uh, Ocean Protocol, and we've been building in this ecosystem for I think nine or 10, um, we've completed nine or 10 successful grants and we've been in the ecosystem for about a year. And um, so you can look at some of our previous proposals on their discourse. And um, in terms of the technologies that we've built, um, one example is an integration of a popular data science framework called Jupyter Lab with MetaMask. Um, We've also been integrating the Ocean Marketplace with Hugging Face. Um, so, so this is the first Web3 integration with Hugging Face, which is a popular data science platform. Um, and we were recently successfully awarded a, a Falcon grant um, to build out some open source um, um, storage uh, solutions um, that provide better support in the language that data scientists are used to, um, which is Python. Um, in terms of events, we host a number of different types of things. Um, one of them is community discussions, as you can see here. We also run study groups, reading groups, uh, hacking sessions, which is kind of like a course to teach people how to do AI and Web3. Um, and also we've run a hackathon. Um, this one, for example, was on um, classification of EEG measurements, which are like um, sensors around the brain and to develop a uh, to be able to classify whether someone has their eyes open or eyes closed. In terms of uh, the people and organizations that are part of our community, um, as I mentioned, we have 12 different independent AI teams. I'm gonna show you some of their um, um, stuff here. So for example, um, this is the deep DeFi team and what they're trying to do is save people money uh, when they're borrowing from popular um, DeFi protocols. So they use time series forecasting models to do this. And you can check out their website on the previous page, or you can check out a demo um, of the app uh, here. Um, another one is the virtual object detector. So this is um, training object detectors to like, um, I guess in future navigate the metaverse um, uh, by training uh, in synthetic uh, worlds. Another project is a smart NFT search. So this uses NLP to search uh, the different uh, NFTs. And this app is using uh, Gradio, I think. And um, so this will search um, all of the different NFTs and it's just a, a nicer, um, it gives better results than OpenSea, for example. And um, I don't know if this is gonna work in time. Yeah, you can see some search results here. So you can play around with that. And um, we have a healthcare team. So they've just released, while well, they're working on a, a white paper. And the idea is um, to address problems in mental health clinical trials. And they're also writing smart contracts um, for, for decentralized clinical trials. Um, another one of our squads works on medical image classification. So you can check out this tutorial for running the demo app um, that was created. And um, this is a very early stage um, app for um, scripting, for writing a scripting language that allows you to crowdsource human intelligence tasks um, as well as working with smart contracts. So you can imagine these DAOs with smart contracts running autonomous things. And also we can create source human tasks, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, so in terms of other organizations, um, we, were, um, we, we took part in kernel block four in our very early days. It's baked into our DNA. 
Um, and this is really where we learned a huge amount of our community building um, was from the Kernel community, and we're still very close with them. Um, as I mentioned, uh, we're also very close uh, with the OceanDAO ecosystem and also uh, uh, work closely with lots of different teams in OceanDAO. Um, and also we're quite close with the DSAT community. So we're hosting a decentralized AI event in Berlin this month, uh, just in case anyone is around. Um, and I've also mentioned uh, a few more in our proposal, for example, protocol labs. Um, we've attended summits for things like compute over data, which is like a decentralized uh, compute uh, uh, infrastructure and also decentralized storage. Um, some of our community members, um, including me, are members of the Token Engineering Commons and Trusted Seed, and uh, also alumni of the Token Engineering Academy. And finally, um, this proposal uh, was put together uh, by um, YGG Anderson originally. Um, so thanks, uh, he's really excited about an AI Commons as well. So um, we've kind of uh, aligned uh, to do this. Um, Okay, so the final thing I want to talk about is uh, our vision and like, why, why is this community needed? So like the two stories that I always tell and um, that led to the creation of Algovera. Um, uh, the first is that I worked for a tech company, uh, applied for the job, didn't know which uh, team I was going to be in. And then I was placed in the surveillance team. And so, um, you know, I was in my first week, I was given a data set of millions of uh, different camera images um, and asked to track people across different views. So I wrestled with um, this idea of, you know, what is it, is it okay to um, create AI for certain applications? Because like at the engineering level, it really just seems like problem solving and you, you feel really detached from the real world. So I was thinking about these things a lot. Um, and the reason uh, what we wanted to do with Algovera was um, empower data scientists and AI teams to come up with ideas bottom up. Um, and the hypothesis is that if people come up with their own projects and want to work on things that they're passionate about, they're going to work on things that are generally good for the world. Um, the converse of that is when tasks are given to people top down, I think you can get generally well-meaning people who work on things that aren't necessarily good for the world. And so um, if we change the structure um, of AI organizations, I think we can, uh, it can lead to different results. The second story is that I was trying to start an AI startup um, and was having trouble with um, uh, funding. So for example, we moved into the university um, we applied for, we had the idea outside of the university, applied for funding, um, which required us to move into the university. Of course, when we moved into the university, they owned all of our ideas and IP. Um, and so when, when we wanted to spin out, um, they, the only way that you can get access to what you've created is, um, is by giving the university 10% of your company. And in return for that 10%, they don't even give you back the IP. They, uh, you pay royalties on it, um, possibly forever. Um, so this didn't seem fair. Um, and then because of the ownership structure, uh, we, were, we couldn't raise VC. So we were restricted to like government funding. Um, and this was taking a very long time. It ended up taking two years. Um, about 18 months in, I decided to try different funding avenues. Uh, that's when I applied for uh, an Oceandale grant. And within one or two months, uh, I got my, my uh, our, our first funding and we were able to like, you know, start development work for the very first time. So I think it's really important to come up with different funding models um, for uh, AI projects, because um, at the moment, like, it's so hard to get funding that I think a lot of people end up, you know, um, just not starting a company or, you know, just working for a tech company or something like that. And I really think that we have, um, we have a lot of uh, good resources behind us to complete this project. Um, the whole AI stack, uh, the AI stack is large and we have ideas in lots of different parts and like we're well connected. So for example, um, infrastructure is a major component. Um, we're building with uh, infrastructure technologies such as ocean marketplace, protocol labs, um, and we have relationships with other projects like Jensen. Um, we work closely with data unions, um, which is really important for getting the data. Um, we're close with the DSI world. So this is critical for collaborating on large scientific data sets and pushing forward AI research. Um, and finally, I think token engineering is a critical component of the solution. Um, how can we design AI economies? How do we redistribute the value generated by AI? I think these are all massive problems and things that token engineering simulations can really help. So I think by putting all of these different components together, um, we can start to tackle this really massive problem. Um, 
And yeah, that's that's it for me for now. I hope you're really excited about this AI Commons um, and we would love to have your vote. Thank you very much.